All right, good morning, everybody. Happy Easter to you. He is risen, and since you can't respond, I'll help you. He is risen indeed. We are excited to be able to share uh, with all of you this morning from the rooftop of Sunrise Community Fellowship in Vacaville, California, where it's a nippy 30-something degrees, but I'm sure it's colder in other places. But uh, we are excited this morning to be with you and to share God's word together. Let me pray. Father God, I praise you and thank you so much for this opportunity that we have to get into your word this morning, to celebrate your resurrection and what that means to us as believers in Christ. And Lord, I just thank you for each person who's with us this morning and just pray right now in the name of Jesus that your Holy Spirit would just speak into each and every person's life. Lord, we love you and we thank you so much that you loved us beyond what we can understand to send your son on our behalf. Lord, we love you and thank you in your son Jesus' precious name, amen. Well, this morning, I want you to know that we are joining Christians all over the world in celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Easter is truly a wonderful holiday and a very popular one with lots of enjoyable traditions. The day is often filled with special church services, honey-baked hams, egg hunts, and the biggest candy-fueled sugar rush this side of Halloween. Today is much more than a bunch of traditions. Today is about the greatest event in all of history, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. It guarantees life-changing hope to all who believe, both in this life and the life to come. Hope is a beautiful word. Biblically defined, it means more than just mere desire. It goes beyond a longing that may or may not be fulfilled. We can hope for a better paying job, or for our favorite sports team to win a championship, but it might not happen. This isn't the hope we're talking about. In scripture, hope means to expect with confidence. Christian hope is the eager anticipation of a guaranteed outcome. This is the hope found in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, he says, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness by his wounds we have been healed three days later according to scripture Jesus returned to life in great power and majesty so let's let that soak in for a moment that the eternal Son of God chose to leave heaven's glory take on human flesh endure great injustice and die a horrific death all out of love for us to pay the price for our sins, that's how much he cares for all people. But none of that would have mattered if he had stayed dead. That's why Jesus' resurrection is the single greatest event in history of mankind. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the apostle Paul calls the resurrection a matter of first importance. And he later says that without the resurrection, our preaching is useless, and so would be our faith. The importance of Jesus' resurrection can never be overstated. There is great power in the resurrection. Philippians 3.10 says there's a new birth and a living hope in the resurrection. 1 Peter 1.3 says a, save, a risen Savior matters in every way. So the resurrection of Jesus guarantees life-changing hope to all who believe, both in this life and the life to come. The resurrection authenticated all of Jesus' claims about himself. Among his many claims on earth, Jesus claimed he was eternal, John 10, 28, sinless, John 8, 29, and one with God, in John 10, 30. And he possessed the authority to forgive sins, Luke 5, 20. He also predicted his own death and resurrection many times, John 10 17 John 16 16 and again in Luke 18 33 these are all clear claims to his deity had Jesus remained in the grave he would have been reduced to history's greatest fraud instead the resurrection proved all of Jesus's claims were true after all no one has the power over death except the one who created life why does this give why does this give us present hope 
because we have a Savior who is fully trustworthy. He really is the way, the truth, and the life. The resurrection also validated Jesus' atoning work on the cross. Death is both the punishment for sin, Romans 6, 23, and God's compulsory payment for the forgiveness of sin, Hebrews 9, 22. His holiness and justice requires this. He was perfectly within his rights to destroy humanity for our rebellion against him by banning us, banishing us to hell forever. But yet in his great mercy, he provided and became our perpetuation, a wrath-bearing sacrifice. But a sacrificial death alone was not enough to save us. Jesus' resurrection proved that God had accepted his death as the full redemption price for all those who believe. As Romans 1, 4 says, Jesus was appointed the Son of God in power by his resurrection. Today, if you've repented and trusted in Jesus, you can rest in your assurance of your sins have been completely atoned for. Your salvation isn't up for debate. God is completely satisfied with his son's sacrifice, and we are the beneficiaries of his great exchange. The resurrection assures believers of ultimate victory over all evil. In this life, Christians are locked in a heated battle with the forces of evil, Ephesians 6, 12. But thanks to Jesus, the outcome has already been determined. The resurrection proves us fail-safe confidence of eternal victory. As Acts 17, 31 says, For he, God, has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. When Jesus died and rose again, he landed a fatal blow to sin, Satan, and all evil. As Colossians 2.15 says, And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. This world is a dark, wicked place. But Christians have nothing to fear. Our ultimate victory has already been sealed. So we can rejoice along with Paul, who wrote in 1 Corinthians 15, 57, but thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The resurrection guarantees eternal life to all believers. Benjamin Franklin once said, in this world, nothing can be said to be certain except for death and taxes. But for every Christian, through physical death will always be followed by spiritual immorality, immortality, in the presence of our Savior, thanks to the resurrection. The risen Lord was the first fruits, our forerunner of our own resurrection. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20, uh, in Romans 8, 10, Paul wrote, but if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. In eternity, believers will be clothed just like their savior with the new resurrection bodies, which will never deteriorate or die. We have this remarkable hope because Christ destroyed the power of death. The resurrection foreshadows Jesus' second coming. As the disciples were standing, mouths agape, on the Mount of Olives, following Jesus' ascension, two angels visited them with a glorious message. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. 2,000 years later, we are still waiting for this glorious promise to be fulfilled. But we wait with hope, excitingly expecting a guaranteed outcome. One day, the risen Lord will return to earth in overwhelming power and majesty to redeem his people to vanish all evil 
where and inaugurate his eternal kingdom. In Revelation 11:15 it says where we will enjoy his beautiful presence forever. This is the future hope for all believers, and it should motivate us to live in a way worthy of our heavenly calling as we await our Savior's appearance. We are so blessed by all the things that God has done for us, and not only done for us, but prepared for us. This is an incredible list of things that the resurrection has done, but it's not exhaustive. The resurrection means so many things uh, for us as believers. We will never leave we will never fully mind the depths of the resurrection spiritual riches. Still, we are at the beginning of this awesome hope that we have in the resurrection, re resurrected Christ. Because of Christ, we have hope beyond description. So the thing that we have to understand today is that we've got to start to comprehend the glories of the salvation that he freely offers. Jesus' love is a bottomless fountain that never stops flowing for all who trust in him. Today, if you're not a Christian, I pray that God's spirit is working in your heart to bring you to a place of repentance and faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For those of you who have trusted in him, I pray that that same spirit strengthens your faith, deepens your worship, and continues his work of sanctification in your lives. The resurrection of Jesus guarantees life-changing hope to all who believe both in this life and the life to come. Will you pray with us? Father God, we praise you again and thank you for this very special day that we get to celebrate the greatest event in history. We thank you for your resurrection and what that means to us and for us and for this world. And Lord, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that people all over the place, that today will not just be a day of celebration or a day off, but will be a day of transformation in their life because they've received you, because they love you, and because they worship you. Lord, again, we thank you for this beautiful morning. We thank you for the sunrise, and we thank you, Father God, that we have the opportunity to serve and be your child. Lord, we love you and thank you. In your son Jesus' precious and wonderful name, amen. Just want to remind you real quick, for those who are local, we're having breakfast at 8 o'clock. We're going to go downstairs and start mixing up stuff and get everything ready. So from 8 to 9, we'll have breakfast. And uh, from Donnie and I, this morning, we just want to say uh, happy, happy Easter, Easter and happy Resurrection Sunday. God bless, and we'll see you at 8 o'clock.